Hello guys, welcome back to the combat series. Today, well, oops, oops, oops um, okay. Today, we'll be making stuns. But first, let me um fix something. Since my code is so fucking cluttered, look at how messy this is. Okay, so my code. And so my combat script has a local script and the server script is inside of the server script. So I thought to myself, hey, is having the same copies of a local script and putting it inside of a character is a good idea? I did it I did this to prevent exploders firing a remote which they don't have, but but I'm I'm not making a, a tutorial on how to make a, an RPG or a fighting game. I'm making a tutorial on how to make the combat system, like making the hitbox and making it do damage and stuff. So like, I don't think um, putting the server script inside of the local script is good practice. I don't think that's a good idea, so I'm just gonna um, put this in server script service. We don't need to worry about exploiters fighting the remotes which they don't have. We don't we don't need to worry about that right now since this isn't a tutorial on how to tutorial on how to make a game. But yeah. I may make a uh, tutorial on how to make an RPG soon too. A tutorial on um a fighting game. That might be cool, but still, uh, I'm just gonna um, remove this stuff, putting it inside duplicate storage, since I want to only have one remote and one server script. The uh, copies of the combat script is fine, but I don't think um, having the same copies of the combat uh, server script is a good idea. I think it'll make it less clean or something, I don't know man. I don't think that's good practice. So I'm just gonna make this game with replicated storage with for child mode function. Same for here. Wait for child. Oops. Game oops, oh my god. Game with replicated storage. Wait for child mode function. And we're gonna put this why is there a variable with combo on it? I, I don't think this is needed. I think this was for my old tutorial, like episode 1 or something. I'm just gonna remove that. Okay, I'm gonna put remote above everything. So I think this will work. I, know, I guess. I'm gonna check. Okay, animations is not a valid member of local script. Let's see. Okay, animations is here, is inside the local script. So I'm guessing that the animation folder hasn't loaded yet. So I'm just gonna do script wait for child anims, right? Then we're gonna do the same thing for here, okay? Uh, let's see. Let's see if this works. Okay, 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 boom, right? Yeah, this works now, okay, let's check. Yeah, yeah, yeah it works fine, fine. Okay, now, now, um, this combat script looks really fucking messy. So, um, I think it's because of this um combo combo script let me just move this into a function and i can make it um more clean like this um this function is really um what's it in practice yeah it's not it's not practical then put in the parameters character combo and the max combo 
In this case, our max combo would be 5. But I think... Yeah, let's just... Um, yeah, let's just put in the parameter here. Doesn't hurt too bad. Okay. Instead of if combo equals equals 1, we're gonna do if if combo is smaller than max combo in this case it's gonna be 5 if combo is like 1, 2, 3, or 4 then character character set attribute combo combo plus 1 if the combo is um, the character's combo is 1 it's gonna change it to 1 plus 1 which is 2 if the character's combo is 3, it's going to change to 3 plus 1, which is 4. So yeah, you get the, you get the, you get the deal. Um, else, um, else if, we don't want, um, we don't want to, ch um, we don't want this code to fire if the combo is bigger than max combo, you know. Else if combo is equals to the max combo, okay, if the combo is like 5 or something. Let me think, let me think. Okay, combo, boom, boom, boom. Uh, combo, character, set attribute, 1, you can reset the combo, okay? Let's see if this works, 1, oh yeah, let me, let me call the function first, combo 1, okay? Let me call the function first, change combo, change, uh, combo change, the character, the combo, okay? Um, is there a variable for combo? Yes, there is. Combo. And the max combo, it can be 5 since uh, I have 5 animations. Um, so yeah, you know. Since I'm going to make 5 hits, and we're going to remove this comment because I hate Because it looks looks a bit messy. Combo change character combo 5. Yeah, I think I think we should, this will work. Let me, let me find out. Okay, okay, it's loading. Yeah, yeah, this works fine. Yeah, yeah, this works, this works. Yeah, but the thing is, the combo does not reset. Look at this. The combo is not resetting. So, we're gonna, re um, we're gonna make the combo reset after, let's see, one second, okay? Dot, dot, wait. One. If character get attribute combo, Combo minus one equals its combo. Then character set attribute combo combo one. Okay. So why I did a minus one here was because when you when you click right, the combo changes to two, but your um but your you know, the animation is playing the first combo. It's playing combo one. I'm trying to find. I'm doing this to find the the combo that the character punched in. Like what combo the character punched in. Let's say the current combo is two, but the character punched while he has one combo. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, that's why I did the minus one to find the combo that the character punched in. Like when you punch, your combo is one. You're playing the first animation, and then it changed to two. But I don't want to find the the, the combo that the character did not punch in, so that's why I did a uh, minus one. Okay, I think this will work. Okay, let's see. Let's find out. Let's find out. Okay. Okay. Let's see if it resets. Yeah, yeah, it works. It works. Okay, you know, it's pretty clean, it's pretty clean. Now I'm gonna do the stunning, okay? For the stunning, um, there's a module script called stun handler. You can find it in the toolbox. Stun handler. <laughs> this module script is really good. Okay, you're, I'm gonna put it, put this inside modules, and then require the module. Let's see, okay, okay, modules. 
can remove this. Oops. Modules. Work of stun. I'm just gonna name it SH require okay since so the module stun stun handle and then I'm gonna stun the player okay I'm gonna stun the player so I'm gonna remove this print I'm gonna stun the player for um let's say point one seconds oh, oh no 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 point three seconds first you can open this first okay to stun a player you need to do stun handle dot stun humanoid the humanoid not the character remember um not we're not trying uh we're not gonna use the character for stunning it's not stun character um no no st stun hit up parent but it's actually stun humanoid it's pretty interesting but it is what it is it's kind of weird but you know uh, I didn't. I'm not, I'm not the one that made the module. It's gonna stun the humanoid for the sun unit, the humanoid parameter, and the duration. Okay, we're gonna st sh stun, stun. Okay, sh that stun the, the humanoid, humanoid, and parameter, and uh, the, the duration. It's gonna be um point three seconds. I mean, it's up to you if you want to make it, um, if you want to stun the humanoid for one second, it's up to you. Um, it should be in capital ASH, should work now, 0.35, I'm gonna do 0.35, um, I think this will work. Okay, let's see, let's see. It's kind of weird that, um, you need to use the human instead of the character or the human boot part, but you know, it is what it is. It's a bit dummy. Okay. Boom. Stunned. See? Works perfectly fine. It's, it's a really good module. It also changes the. Um, oh, yeah, the, the. The. Speed to zero. Look at this. It's really cool, and um, it doesn't autom automatically change the the speed back to 16, but it changes to the previous speed, which is really cool. Usually, um, in stun modules, it changes the speed to 16, but um, that's not gonna be good if your default speed is like 30 or something. So, this is the default speed. Let's 3 wait, wait, yeah, 30 we, we punch him boom, 0, boom, back to 30 and here is a problem, okay so when you click your character gets stunned, okay there's gonna be a stunned attribute but when you get stunned by someone else let's say for 5 seconds but the duration won't matter because you'll get unstunned in 0.25 seconds that's such a bad problem so instead of changing the attribute to stunned we're gonna make a different attribute called attacking okay attacking attacking true attacking false okay if we okay, let's remove this if stunned equals equals true and let's add another variable attacking with character get attribute Hacking. And we don't need to change. Um, we don't need um, an equals equals true since if stunned is the same as if stunned equals equals true. So yeah, that's the same. That's the same. Or or attacking then return to end. If the character is stunned or the character is attacking then return end. Let's see if this works. Yeah, it works. And instead of changing this to false, I'm gonna just change this to nil. I'm gonna straight up delete the attribute. I'm also gonna delete this since this is pretty much useless. Oops, I accidentally added something. Okay. 
Um, I think this will work. Yeah. Yeah, this, this works fine. So the thing is, right, the, the, there is an animation problem. So, when your character is stunned, then it's gonna um, return and it's gonna not, um, not gonna start the script, it's gonna stop the script immediately. But the thing is, latency exists and let's say you have a 1000 ping and there's gonna be a, a 2 second delay. But the thing is, you may be unstunned right now, you may be not stunned right now, but in 2 seconds, you may be stunned. See? Yeah. So, that's gonna be a problem. So, but the thing is, once you're stunned here, the hitbox won't start, but the fucking animation will. So, there's, there's, um, so we're gonna remove this to simulate the problem. As you can see, my animations are overlapping, and you don't want to see that happening. So, um, so there's, um, so remote functions can return something. That's really cool, that's why I use remote functions. Remote functions can return a value. Like this. Total, um, D, let's say D. Then, we can just print D. Okay? Print D. D is the remote function. And then we're gonna make it return, uh, let's see, return, return, hello, it'll print, print out hello, since returns work on what functions, that's really cool, look at this, hello, 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 new hello, yeah, it returns nil, because the character was still attacking, so yeah, so I'm gonna return true, like this, okay, return true, as you can see, let, let me play again, okay, let me play again, as you can see, it prints out nil, because at this point in time, I am still attacking or I'm stunned, okay, that'll be really useful for, uh, for this script, okay, so, we can just do something like this, if d then it's the same as if d equals equals true the character animation will play okay and it'll fix out the problem where the animations were overlapping look at this see that's that's, that's pretty cool Yeah, that's, that's cool, alright. That's pretty cool. And I'm pretty sure um, that's all it is. Pretty sure that's the end of the video. Um, that's all I want to say, I think. Wait, hold on, let me, let me find it first. Um, let's see if I need something to change. I'm, you know, I'm just gonna change this the same as 0.25. But yeah, let me explain something. You may be wondering why I did 0.25, I waited 0.25, and then set the attacking to nil. It's because um, in my animation, it'll take 0.25 seconds after the animation starts for the animation to stop. So it's basically um, 0 0.09 seconds after um, the punch lands, so yeah, if you don't understand, this is it for this video, see you guys next time, next time I might, um, I think I'm gonna make blocking next time, yeah, I think I'm gonna make blocking, okay, so this is it for this video, see you next time, goodbye.